Hi everyone, welcome to the test engineering lab. Uh, so in this tutorial, we're going to talk about the SDLC models. SDLC stands for basically software development life cycle. So as uh, you know, in the life cycle of everything that we see around us, there are certain stages that it goes through. So similarly, there are some software development life cycle stages we have. And uh, those are, uh, you know, how they have been implemented is actually, uh, you know, uh, seen in different kinds of models that we have. So we, as we will see the SDLC models, uh, we will actually explain all the SDLC uh, stages. And similarly, we'll see the models. So there are some basic models that are used in SDLC. So just uh, we'll take a look at each and every model out of those so the very basic and simple model that we have is a waterfall model mm -hmm. all the stages in software development life cycle are executed sequentially in this model so what are the basic steps in software development life cycle first is the requirement gathering and analysis you can say so, you know, uh, whenever there is a client uh, who gives out some requirements that, you know, how he wants the software to be, what all things he wanted to be uh, uh, included as a part of it. So all those requirement gathering and analysis is done in the first stage that we see here. Now, the second st stage is design. So, you know, after the analysis of requirement is uh, done, the design of software is formulated. So you can say uh, a prototype or, you know, like not even a prototype, just that how it has to be designed or how the architecture of the whole thing has to be or all those kinds of high level things are uh, included as a part of design. Now comes the stage where the actual coding part of software is done which is a development phase so whatever design has been formulated coding for the same is done in this stage so once the code is done and the development for it is uh, you know done the test engineering team uh, conducts testing on that software and if there are any issues or if there are any uh, things that are conflicting with what is expected in requirements uh, the issues are reported back to the development team at this point. Now, once the testing is completed and if the requirements are satisfied and the sign-off is given by the testing team, that's when the deployment happens on, uh, you know, like on production and, uh, you know, the code is delivered for the client. And afterwards, if there are any enhancements or, you know, if the, maintenance activity that is done, which is like continuous support and all those things are included in this phase. Now, if you see here, there is one loophole in this whole process. Okay, so what happens is, suppose uh, if any issue is identified, all right, like uh, there is any issue or any, any defect that is identified while testing any software. For example, uh, if there is a functionality that uh, on any portal, if you are signing up after you click on the submit button, uh, the requirement says that there has to be an entry in the table for that particular thing or that particular user that has just signed up. And after a user signs up, the success message has to be displayed. Okay, and when the testing team actually tested that, what they had observed is they are not able to see that entry after saving or signing up that user. Also, they are not able to see the success message. Okay, so this issue is reported by the testing team. Now, when the development team receives this issue, what happens is they cannot fix it then and there itself. The waterfall model goes right from the first step so what they will do is they will analyze it against the requirements that was it really a requirement uh, about the issue that has been reported if it is then they accept that defect i mean then they uh, you know take that defect uh, for uh, their development for that they make some changes in the design or whatever design they have to work upon. Then they again work on the development. Then again, the testing happens. 
So here, the major loophole of this whole process is that testing happens at the very end. And that is why whatever issue is identified, it has to go back again from the first step. So it is a very time consuming task. So that is one major uh, loophole in the waterfall model that because testing happens at end, uh, more time is taken for the whole uh, software to be developed and uh, has, uh, you know the issues to be resolved for all the things that are part of it. So that's the very first model, waterfall model. Now we're going to see what incremental model is. Okay. So, uh, you know, in the contrary, when we had seen the waterfall model where there's just one flow that is followed and it is a sequential flow. Now, in incremental model, if we have, uh, say, um, a very complex website, it is broken down into different builds or modules, you can say. So, different functionalities are worked upon by different people you know, in a team. So uh, what happens is if I am creating a website, I have a home page and I have some other page, uh, say uh, I have a page for, uh, you know, the FAQs. See. So what, what my development team would do is they'll just divide this work, you know, into different modules. So one module would be the home page and the other one will be the FAQs page, um, you know, when where the frequently asked questions are posted by people. So what will happen is in the first build that you see here, they'll be working on design and development of home page. These people will be working on design and development of FAQs page. This component would be tested or this build would be tested by testing team independently and this would happen for this as well and then they'll be implemented and actually incorporated or you know deployed so the major advantage of this is in waterfall if you compare this situation with the waterfall what would happen is there'll be just one flow that would be followed if there are any issues it would go back and again worked upon similarly it will continue once this is done they'll actually come to the second build and they'll start its design and development so advantage of incremental model over the other one that we had seen first was this that because there are different builds that are worked upon different modules that are worked upon it's kind of an easier and faster as compared to the waterfall model so this is an incremental model okay so, uh, you know, we are not going to get into the theory part of it, uh, you know, where we'll be listing all the advantages and dis disadvantages, because once we understand these concepts, it is quite self-explanatory that what could be the advantages of using this, this model or not. Now, we have another model called as a spiral model. Okay, so because it has this structure like a spiral, uh, you know, because uh, it has got its name. So like we already had a certain phases, which we have seen initially. So there is a risk uh, planning. After the planning, there is this risk analysis, development and testing happens and evaluation. So if it has to be deployed or not to the uh, production or if it has to be worked upon again. So, uh, you know, like you can see, uh, si suppose you can take an example of the operating system on your smartphones or mobile phones that you have, the Android OS or whatever. So what generally happens is a development team plans for it. They analyze the risks and start developing and testing of that. So they have certain things that they want to enhance in that existing thing or, you know, implement in that uh, software. So the development and testing happens over here and then they deploy it and evaluate it based on whatever issues that were identified. Okay, and that is released. Now what happens is based on the issues that were identified as a part of this particular cycle, what they do is whatever the gaps are there or whatever the improvements mm. that have to be taken are taken up in the next thing. So they'll again plan for it, analyze, they'll test it again and it will go on. Okay. So, you know, like you see, uh, if there is a version 1.0.1, one, okay, which is here and they know what are the issues in that. So that issue would be taken up 
in the next release which is 1.0.2 and it would be taken up in the next release whatever issues are identified so this spiral model will go, will go on okay so yeah the basic thing that we can see over here in spiral model is that the prototyping is done the softwares are worked upon uh, on a continual basis based on the previous outcomes and all that so this is how the spiral model is and it is not really widely used at the moment um, you know not at the moment actually because uh, most of the companies now follow agile uh, and we'll have a dedicated section which uh, will be uh, you know used for discussion on the agile model okay so uh, what we have seen is this first waterfall model that we have which is quite old and nobody really uses it now then we had this incremental model uh, which has this modularization thing and you know the people are working on it uh, parallel you can see that the development happens now in the spiral model uh, you can see that there are different versions and releases that are happening and the prototyping is done and you know um, this hap uh, this happens on a regular basis and kind of an iterative basis in spiral model and we have this v model now that we'll discuss so v model is kind of a very uh, good model as compared to the previous ones why because for all the other uh, models that we had seen so far uh, we had seen that the testing begins after the development is done okay uh, whereas in the v model what happens is the testing and uh, developing uh, development things are not really happening uh, one after the other like development happens first and only then the testing begins after the entire development is done so uh, there are some this uh, development phases that have corresponding testing phases in this v model for example let's see this okay so first of all let's assume that the coding has been done from development's perspective so this is what happens as a part of development first we have requirement specification then we have system requirement specification based on business requirements then the high level design is done then the coding part that is the low level design is done okay low level design and the coding and implementation part so now considering when the coding is done okay what is for the low level design for the code that we have we perform unit testing okay that means for that component itself or that module itself whatever small piece of code we have we will perform testing now high level design so say if you have one module you would independently execute that module which is a component test okay now because we have different modules that are developed in as a part of development what we would be doing is we would be combining all these models into one system and we will test the system together which is called as system integration testing and lastly whenever a qa or a testing team gives a sign off that time what we do is we perform acceptance testing which would against the requirements that are received and pose that this you know sign off has been given so uh, you know the basic agenda of having these uh, sdlc models discussed is because we are going to learn a more complex model that is followed in the market at moment which is agile so the basic agenda of having this tutorial was to make you familiar with what are the software development life cycles now that we are clear so the basic uh, sdlc uh, phases are requirement gathering and requirement analysis then we do the planning then we do design you know which is a high level and low level design once that is done we actually do the coding part or the development and then we perform testing of it and after that the last phase that comes is maintenance which happens on a continuous basis in software industry okay so uh, that is one very important topic that we had discussed uh, even though we did not discuss more about the advantages and disadvantages of these things uh, after understanding the structure of all these models uh, that is kind of a self explanatory thing you know so 
uh, in the next lecture what we are going to do is we will take a look at the agile process and methodology so that is actually not a part of manual testing the agile topic that we're going to take a look at uh, applies to all the uh, stakeholders or all the people that are part of agile be it developers or business analysts or the testing team that are going to be a part of it so you know uh, i think we can conclude this session if you have any queries please uh, post it to the comment section of this video and uh, hit like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already thanks guys